a fish. I went fishing with my buddies down the Cape, not down the Cape, down to Florida, and we caught what was called an amberjack, and it was this big fish like this, and the guy that we went on the fishing trip with said, it's a very special fish, he should mount it, so I, I spent, I don't know, a couple hundred dollars to have it mounted and found out that anybody can catch an amberjack, and it lasted in my house, I don't know, maybe three months, four months, and I threw it out. It was stupid. I wish, I wish, I wish I learned how to play the guitar or the piano. My dad could play the guitar and uh, I wanted to play the guitar as a kid but my dad wouldn't let me play because he thought I would join a band, like a rock band. And he said, you're not going to play the guitar. I said, said, teach me how to play it. And uh, never, never came to fruition but, you know, I like to sing. I can sing a little. Uh, my sisters, I have four sisters that all sing very well. And kind of thing around our house at holidays was my dad playing the guitar and all of us kind of singing. So I, you know, look back and I wish I could have learned to play an instrument. My mother kind of tells me I was around eight. Um, I, my sister had white figure skates that I used to wear on the tennis court. They used to freeze the tennis courts in my hometown. And I was in the first grade, I think first grade is around eight years old, seven or eight. And I used to get down the tennis courts and kind of fool around with the guys that were down there. That's how I started. In the white skates? In the white skates with little blue pom-poms on the toes. You guys must have picked on you a little bit, huh? uh, Yeah, hockey's a macho kind of game, but I had a stick in my hand, so I was okay. Still is, uh, Davey Christian. He's very immature. Well, you know, I think probably two errors. You know, when I was a kid, I loved Stan Makita. Uh, I wore number 21 because of Stan Makita, although he wasn't a Boston guy, he played for the Blackhawks. And then I think over the years, I've got to know some hockey players, and you know, one of my good friends is Mario Lemieux, and I loved watching him play. I, I appreciated his skill and talent, and now that I've, I've become a good friend of his, I appreciate him as a person and, and what he's all about. He's the ultimate gentleman, uh, a, a first-class individual. Um, so I, I would have to put those two guys as people that uh, I, I, I admire as players. I met her, well, I, I played against her when I was at Boston University, but the first time I met him, um, when the team was being selected to try out, the players were being selected, um, my name came up in a meeting, and somebody, and I know who that person is, but I'm not going to get into that, said, you can't invite it, Ruzioni, he's a troublemaker and he's a bad liver. And Billy Cleary, the coach at Harvard, happened to be in the room, and he went, wait a minute, hold it, are you, are you talking about the same guy? And... Uh, Billy Cleary called Jack Parker, my coach here, and said, somebody said, made this comment, and uh, Jack said, that's, in Jack's words, typical East-West, you know, Eastern player, Western people. Uh, well, Billy Cleary said, absolutely not. And Herb said, okay, we'll, we'll invite him to camp. I heard the story from Coach Cleary, and I was playing in Toledo, Ohio at the time, and I drove from Toledo to Detroit the University of Minnesota was playing in the national championship that time, at that, that time of year. And I, actually, I think Eric Strobel had four goals or three goals in the game. I didn't know who any of these guys were. Neil brought, and I went, wow, he's a good player. And uh, I, I met Herb. I went to the locker room, uh, and I said, Coach, uh, Mr. Brooks, and that's when he said, uh, my father's Mr. My, I'm Herb. I guess that was a common. I said, um, he goes, I know who you are. He says, look, I don't know who said this about me, but that is absolutely false. I've, I've never been a troublemaker. I've been a good player, a good leader. He goes, I, I get it. I, I understand. Don't worry. I look forward to seeing you in Colorado Springs. And I got in the car and drove back to, to Toledo. It was about, a, about an hour drive. Not too bad from Toledo. Um, I think the University of I know the University won, Minnesota won the national championship that year. Um, and I think I left the game. They were like winning 6 to 2 or some, some crazy number. But again, another place, somebody saying something that wasn't true, but uh, obviously wasn't a, you know, a fan of mine. But when I see that person now, it's amazing how they shake my hand and smile. Around the players, how intense they were at times and how serious they were, and yet we're trying to have some fun and they're kind of grinding it out. 
Uh, but yeah, this, I think in the locker room was kind of fun when just the coaches would sit around and have a couple of beers and, you know, telling stories. Buzzy and I are telling stories about the Olympics, and, and they at times were almost like little kids listening to us, and, and many of them were our age or close to our age. Um, but I think that was the, that was the most fun, fun being being around the campers and seeing how much fun they were having. Uh, seeing some of the new people. Um, I mean, the old people are going to be blast because they've been there, they've experienced it, be like the veterans, you know. And, and seeing those guys as well, you know, seeing Big Walt and shaking his hand, seeing how you're doing. Uh, I think a lot of the coaches, you know, made some friendships uh, with the with the uh, with the campers. And I think the the new campers are going to bring that. The they're the rookies. They're going to. This is all going to be new to them. So they'll be you know a little wide-eyed. Um, so I think that's that's going to be fun to see.